Hello and welcome to Fox Talk, where I, Kabiri Fox, yeah, you don't know me probably, and if you do, I feel sorry for you. I do. But anyways, where I answer your questions about my stuff or things I do, and also teach you different techniques on how to make things, weather things, build things, light things on fire, throw them through your ex's house. No, not the last. But I, I basically pass on my skills that I've learned throughout time and to you, the viewer, the costumer, the connoisseur, whatever you are. So you can take these on into your life and build awesome epic things. By the way, every time I say epic, you have to take a drink of something. For me, Diet Coke. You can thank uh, Jaro for that. If anyone knows Jaro, walk up to him and smack him in the arm and say, Kiberi Fox said thank you. Anyways, so let's go ahead and get off to a good start here. This is my first Fox talk in a very long time. I used to do stuff kind of like this every once in a while. Um, a lot of them were really humorous and joking and kind of lewd. But um, unfortunately, my YouTube account was hacked, and when it was hacked, uh, the person deleted a lot of my old videos and everything, so fortunately, most of those aren't around anymore. Um, and really epically epic armor walkthrough of epic proportions, um, and if anyone knows the joke behind why I keep saying epic over and over, um, you'll understand from the one video that does still exist, um, I used the word epic probably about 75 times within a minute so um yeah but anyways it was a um an armor walkthrough on one of my old kits the one that uh really got me i guess well known amongst uh the cop the uh, star wars custom costumers um even amongst a lot of the canon costumers as well um so along with that i did the walkthrough with it which i'm gonna do another walkthrough uh once my upgrades of the new Kabiri Fox costume are done, um, which is technically classified as General Kabiri Fox. It's the actual real deal when it comes to him. Um, so, anyways, it's 2003, I mean, 13. Um, how I got those two mixed up, uh, I'm going to blame liquor and women, um, neither of which I have nor can have. Um, <laughs> so. Anywho, moving forward, let's go ahead and get forward with today's tutorial. Today's tutorial actually is something that people have been bothering me for a really long time how to teach them how to do. Um, I've taught some people how to do it. It's been really hard to kind of through PM to teach people how to do it. Um, people who know me in person have kind of learned how to, but I've been kind of secretive about it because uh, it kind of my trademark in a lot of ways with uh, a lot of my kids, especially with Kabiri. Um, the little background, I just recently figured out that I made my very first Kabiri Fox costume over 10 years ago. It's 2013 now. Um, it was around episode 2 time, excuse me, so Star Wars episode 2 time when I made him the very first one, which I had for a very long time actually until about two and a half years ago. I kind of kept changing things out, sort of, kind of, but I didn't really start going crazy with them until about two and a half, three years ago. Uh, the version that's the most famous of him, actually, I have a picture here, is this guy right here. That's right, that's me. I have a photo of myself. Um, ego? I don't know. Um, there's the RoboArm. A lot of people know RoboArm. That's actually RoboArm before it got the machine gun hand. Yeah, I said machine gun hand. Um, I'll show that in another episode. But um, in a lot of the stuff you can see, it has kind of a scorched look to it. So what I'm going to show you today is how to, number one, make armor. So I use Sentra. So we're going to make armor from Sentra. Um, and on top of that, that's going to be a quick run through. I'm actually going to do another tutorial on how to make that itself. Um, but this is going to be how to make it so it looks real and it looks really good. So it looks like this. Let me grab this here for you. So it looks like that. That's right. The general has new armor. Um, this right here is actually what they call PVC foam board, also known as Sentra. It's it's rock hard. Um, 
and it's actually the color black. It comes in white, gray, or black. Um, I think it comes in some other colors as well. But um, with different paints and everything, you can actually make it look all crazy like this. I'm sorry if it's getting out of focus. But you can see it's a very good solid rich material. Um, I'm actually going to do a tutorial as well on how to do lights like this. Um, I have a system called the Poor Man's LED system. Um, actually involves uh, a series of LED battery-powered Christmas lights um, and Sentra and hot glue to do it like that. So, um, but yeah, I'm going to show you how to make it look like this. So, to get started, what you'll want is you'll actually want a heat your armor, which is going to be Sentra. Um, you can see this is a black piece right here. Now, Sentra can be cut with a box knife. Uh, you always want to use a sharp blade all the time and be very, very careful because sharp blades cut really well and they cut fingers very, very well. But you know what cuts worse than that is a dull blade and dull blades hurt really freaking bad. So what you'll do is you have your little piece of Sentra where I just, this is a scrap. I have so many scraps of it laying around. Um, so you cut it out, you have a template of some form. Let's see here. Um, let's say I have this. I want to make this out, you know, out of center. So I would take it, I'd lay it on the plastic like so, take a Sharpie or paint pen or whatever, trace it on there. It's on there. You, then you're going to take your box knife. You want to, you can kind of score it, follow lines, and then put a little pressure on it. And we'll go through. Um, one thing I forgot to mention is that Sentra does come in different thicknesses as well. Um, this is the, um, I can't remember the actual number, but this is the common thickness uh, that most time people get. There, it does come in one little thinner, which is kind of like ABS, but it's really, I mean, it, it'll break. Um, it does come in a thicker, one size thicker than this as well, um, which is really good for some really thick plating, but you have to remember it's going to be heavy. Uh, it's also a little harder to warm up. So, once you've already done your little template and everything, you know, and cut out and be like, do to do to do, ow my finger, and like, yeah, no, I really do have a finger there. But, um, so you're gonna have your piece there. Now, more than likely, your armor's not going to be flat. Now, my chest armor, as flat as it looks, it actually isn't. Um, I have accents that fold back on the sides. Most time it's gonna be a, you know, smooth curvature. Um, like such, um, actually I have a piece right here, let me grab this. A lot of times it's going to look like this. This is a standard Mando plate right here. Yes, I do have random just pieces of armor laying around. So, as you can see, this is PVC foam board right here. It's got Velcro on the back, that's how we attach it, but as you can see, this has been heated. This one was actually wasn't made by me, this was actually made by one of my friends. Um, that was on his old Wayland Dow costume um, that he ended up not using at all. So, um, except he wore it once. But, so I would actually warm it up a little more and smooth out a little bit more on that. I'm really anal about that kind of stuff. Um, so, when you come to actually wanting to form your armor, uh, you want to use a heat gun. Uh, so, heat gun or even the oven. So, people put it in the oven and they'll, they'll form it and everything like that. Now, I'm actually going to go over all that in another episode. I'm going to fast forward here because you guys tuned in to learn the secret of Kabiri Scorching. I'm really sharing it now. So what you want to do is you take your piece of Sentra like so, that's right, and you want to prime it. Um, it's always very, very, very good to prime your plastic because it gives the paint something to bond to. Um, if not, you have a chance of things flaking, coming up, you know, bubbling off, scratching off, and then you have a black piece of plastic. Um, and you look like Rubbermaid, you know, off in this prime. Um, which I don't recommend. So, once you've primed it, you sprayed a little primer on there, um, which I use brown primer because it looks like rust if it comes through. Um, once you get to that point, you want to go ahead and usually I recommend on everything to paint everything with a silver base coat base, base coat because um, if it gets scratched, metal tends to be silver. So you'll paint it silver. I use Rust-Oleum's 
metallic silver. Um, I can use Rust-Oleum for just about everything. Uh, Cryolon and I don't normally get along very well. Um, I apologize if any Cryolon fans are watching. You can go roll around in that nasty crap all you want because I don't like it. And this is the point where my cart would be like, Here's your old friend, Krusty Krylon! <laughs> yeah, um, I don't like Krylon. It, it's necessary for certain colors that rust -Oleum don't make. Um, I just try to stay away from it. So I, I use rust -Oleum for just about everything. Um, so, anyways, back on topic. You want to paint it silver. Like so. Now you can go ahead and put, once that's dry, which it's always good to make sure you give yourself ample drying time because if not, you know, even though it might feel dry, it might still be tacky, which can cause chemical reactions between other paints and then you've spent four hours and it's screwed and you get mad and you throw it through a window and your, you know, your ex comes running at you, you know, with a pitchfork and then aliens come from the sky and, you know, um, Chuck Norris jumps and, yeah, it gets bad. So, anyways, make sure the paint's dry. Um, I keep my stuff silver. Um, now I would normally put like tiger stripes, something like that. I have the um, 327 tiger stripes. Now 327 is something that goes along with Outer Rim Brigade. Anyone who knows me or knows the costuming community will know what Outer Rim Brigade is. As I say this, I realize I have the banner behind my head. Shameless self-promotion. So, here's where it starts. Now, on a lot of these things, you can use tools to damage it before you paint it. On all my pieces, as you will notice, let me grab this again here for you. You will notice I have gouges and scratches and everything on here, you know, all around here. It's on all my armor, on the edges and things like that. That's actually all done with a Dremel. Um, I'm going to cover that in another tutorial later on. I keep saying, another tutorial, another tutorial, yeah. Um, I'm going to cover a lot of things. So, I like have primer on my forehead. Um, I will go through it, I'll make battle damage. You want, Less is more when it comes to it. There's some people who just start going crazy with their Dremel. And in the end it looks like an angry woodchuck like declared war on their armor yeah don't do that um it you know it's awesome people who have military experience kind of know where battle damage tends to happen on armor or you know equipment or things um or anyone's worked around machinery you know do your research look at reference photos you know uh, and that's one thing i always recommend anyways on the costume is do your research especially if it's a custom um like if you're doing like a custom mandalorian research a lot on Mandal on the mandalorians themselves um because even though it's custom, it still needs, means it needs to be in universe. Um, none of this like Iron Mando stuff. <laughs> People can hate me for saying that, but yeah. Anyways, back on topic. So you already went through, made your little notches, which I'll cover later on how to do. Um, now, there's two different ways you could do this. Now, you could just leave it like this and go to the next step which is the heavy scorching but there is an optional thing you can do here which is actually really cool it's kind of a distressing thing um, now it's similar to what some people do on their armor as well I did this on my version 2 Jello cast which is the one that is featured on the top series 7 galaxy uh, Star Wars Galaxy trading card set um, it's the one that uh, Lucasfilm artist Jamie Snell used for his references uh, which he actually has a copy of that helmet itself now. Um, but I did this distressing technique on the paint to actually give it the uh, kind of burnt, scorched, really dent defined, dent look. So, what you'll do here is I open it up and give it the hell ray without telling you what it is. What I have in my hair is actually a studio quality acrylic paint. Um, I really can use any black acrylic paint. Um, honestly, you could actually probably use any color. It depends what you would want the undercoat to kind of look like. I use black because it looks like scorching. It looks like it's been seared. Um, I use pearl. This was actually a um, gift to me. It was given to me. Um, so, and this 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 is like a 10, 15 year old batch here. So, ones you get are going to be a little thinner. This one's had a long time to kind of cure. Anyways, so. What we're going to do here is you want to take your paintbrush, 
like this right here. Most of the time you want to cut off the bristles and have it really thin. It's really similar to dry brushing. I go a little thicker and a little bigger with Kabiri um, uh, or even Jodo for me. So you have your piece of plastic, you have your paintbrush. You, as you can see, I put a little bit of black on the end there. It's a little globbed on there. Now what you're going to do is say you have like a scratch. There's a scratch. I mean, you can't really see it that well, but it's right there. Um, you'll take the black and you don't want to go like this. You don't want to go like this, you know, with it, uh, or like this, or oh yeah. Um, you want to kind of dabble it because the thing about damage in nature or in the world, or when you get hit by something, it's not uniform. It doesn't go. Oh, the scorching's equal on this side. It's on this side. Ooh, it's perfectly part like the sea, you know, with Moses or and something. So it's important that there is imperfection to it because imperfection is perfection when it comes to battle damage. So what you want to do is you want to go ahead and I'm kind of do this here so you can see. Take it and you'll kind of dabble the black on there like so. Kind of like this. So essentially you kind of have a black line there. Whoops, as I go this direction. So I tend to not ever do it that big. Let me make this a little bigger here. So that right there is going to essentially kind of be our damage area. As you can see, I just dabbled it on, kind of a point, uh, not rushing or whatnot. Now, you have to remember this is wet acrylic paint, so anything you do to it, it's going to smear anything like that. You don't want to smear. Yeah, you don't want to smear. Now, almost all my battle damage that I do on everything is topical. Um, I can do the weathering battle damage, you know, where you actually wear it down with sandpaper so other colors come through, things like that. Um, on certain kits, certain ideas, that, that's necessary, that works awesome. For my own personal stuff, I actually like to do topical. It gives me a little bit more of an artistic um, ability to do things. Um, so, the one exception is the Krylon rule. I use the Krylon paint pens. These things are amazing. They... I'm lost without them. Um, I use the silver, I use the gold, and I use the black very religiously. Um, so what you basically do here is you want to make sure that your tip, which this paint pen is kind of dead, um, I'm kind of salvaging it to make it work, it, so if it turns out bad it might look kind of bad, but you want to make sure that it has a lot of paint in it. So you'll take it and you kind of push on things, you know, to get the flow down, you'll get to kind of puddle up, make yourself a puddle, make sure the end's wet. Now, what you want to do here is you kind of want to tap it like so, kind of like this. And remember, imperfection is perfection. So now, you have yourself a singed area. Now, remember, to make it epically epic of epic proportions, it needs to really kind of have a realistic look to it. Now, scorching tends to kind of fry along the edge and everything like that. So, what's also nice about these paint pens is it's a different color silver slightly than most of the silver that you will use, so it kind of pops a little bit. So, in essence, there you go. You got yourself a pretty sweet little gouge, and it looks like it's distressed, you know, everything like that. And it kind of actually looks like it's dug in, but you remember. That was a flat piece of, piece of plastic just a little bit ago, but now it looks like a gouge. So you do this all over the thing, um, and uh, you've got all different gouges and scratches and things, and your mom and all the other good stuff. Um, actually, your mom's not good stuff. Anyways, um, so you've gotten to that point, which I want to really emphasize too on battle damage. I've seen, you know. I believe every person's costume is their personal work of art, and I would never, ever put someone down for their work, ever. I see, you know, with Our Rimber Gay, with Orb, I see a lot of applications come through, and um, I see some people who have absolutely amazing kits that blow me out of the water. Um, and I see some ones that are really good, and you can see that these this is their the person's first kit, and when I look at that, I see, you know, it makes me happy because these people have put so much time and effort into um, making their dreams come true. So that's one reason why I'm doing this video because I see a lot of potential in people and 
one reason why I do costuming is to um, give back. Uh, give back to the community and give back to you know, my friends, family, and such. But also to help others achieve their dreams because I know for me how big a deal this is in my life. I want it to also be in theirs. It's something that they can look at, up you know, pictures of and go, wow, that's me. I look like I walked off the screen. Um, so, you know, when your kit has stuff like that on it, 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 it tends to wow people. Um, now, mind you, do you want scratches like that all over? Might not, because there is such thing as overkill battle damage. Um, and I never thought I'd ever say that. But there is. Um, there's a point where you kind of look like a freckle. You know, like you have measles or something, or a pumpkin with, you know, zits. But, um, so anyways, moving on. So now you've gotten to this point where you have your done piece of plastic, um, which, by the way, I thank you for staying 20 minutes into it to get this far. It's actually a test. I'm making people sit through this to get to the best part. All my other ones will be a lot shorter. Ha! <laughs> On purpose. So you have your piece of plastic. It's You've already formed it. It's all ready. You've done your cool little gouges and such. Now comes scorching. What I have here is my secret weapon. Now, before I show this to you, my old secret weapon actually we don't make anymore. Um, it was a type of primer. Uh, I haven't been able to find it probably about two years. Um, I originally got it from Lowe's. It was the very cheapest stuff ever. And that's actually how I was able to achieve the scorching that's really well known for um, Kabiri when he had the rubble arm. Um, because the primer would get on there and it you could scorch it, but then it would kind of rub off <laughs> giggity, um, of the armor and kind of leave it, you know, with that really cool scorch look because it didn't grip very well. Because um, I'd use it as an overcoat, anyways. Um, it's kind of like a powder base of some weird form, but it probably created cancer or deformed babies or made you know rabbits have twelve legs or something. So they discontinued it. Um, so now what I use is I use Rustoleum. Flat black paint. Paint. It's not primer. It's paint. And it's sure as heck not paint. Um, so I've explained to a few people how to do this part, and here's the big show. I'm not gonna spray it inside my room because I'm not that dumb. I'm not claiming to be a genius. What you want to do here is here's a can length. That right there, however close that is, that's too close because you're spraying from here, it's going to be like, it's not going to look good. What you want to do is you want to actually go about shoulder width. So however wide your shoulders are, I mean, for me, it's like here to here. I'm, you know, five foot ten and a half, 200 pounds. Big boy. Um, no, I do not call myself fat. Get that out of your head. Uh, I'm not fat. So what you want to do is you actually want to take the paint and you want to kind of just mist it like this back and forth so kind of like this kind of like and then a and again remember imperfection is perfection now you're going to kind of get a mist you want to mist it so it's kind of getting there now what you'll do is you turn kind of on the side like such and you will move in about a can length away and you will spray along the edge until it starts getting almost black same with the edges here. Remember, you're doing the misting, um, so it, it takes a little bit. So you start kind of just going like this, and then you'll move a little bit closer with the body. So it should actually be dark on the outside and fade in light to the lighter to the inside, but the inside should still be dark, you know, medium. Now, in certain areas, you can go a little darker, certain a little lighter, because uh, for it to be really epic of epically epic, epic proportion, epic the drink something um it uh it needs to again be imperf imperfect so in the end what you end up with and i went a little bit heavier with mine because i tend to go heavier with stuff um like you know heavy metal so in the end you end up with this this was originally this that's right now I went just a little bit heavier for this tutorial so that people could see the difference of what's going to happen. Now on this plastic right here, I actually did some etching on it with uh, the box knife so when we're doing some weathering here in a little bit, you can actually see the difference there. Um, so now we've got this piece of plastic. 
you waited for the black to dry. Remember, it needs to be dry or else it will clump up, it will cause you hell and you will not be happy and you've just now wasted hours. Yeah, and it sometimes it's impossible to recreate stuff. So you've gotten to this point. What's next? Well, in the past I went lighter um, along the edges, kind of missed them and everything. I'd leave it good. Um, maybe run some sort of light sandpaper over it to kind of take some sheen out, but that was about it. We'll now enter in the newest kind of twist to it, which actually makes it identical to the old scorching, which is what people keep wanting to create. Re create? Recreate. Because I created it. Well, someone else created it long ago. Yeah, I, I'm not full of myself. I don't have an ego or anything like that. So, <laughs> people are laughing at me right now. Um, I, uh, I'm just sharing what I know. So, what you'll need next, then, is steel wool. Uh, thank you to my buddy Seth for teaching me about steel wool. Um, now, what's important to remember is everything's been put on here in layers, and as everything can be built up, it can also be torn down. So this is kind of like this weathering where you're taking some off. Um, you know, take it off, take it off. You know, it's not like a Portland stripper. Sorry. Um, um, so what we're going to do here is we are going to take the steel wool and we're actually going to start rubbing it onto the plastic. Now, it's very important that you, when you do this, you do this somewhere where um, you know, you're your body is okay where you you can get stuff on you where your floor is not around animals or kids because the pieces of the steel will actually come off and get on the things and it becomes kind of like a powder which is actually a metallic powder um, which gets itchy over time and can also if it gets in your eyes can scratch can cause problems everything like that um, I actually recommend wearing a mask around it I'm not going to because I'm gonna be talking while I'm doing it but don't follow my example yeah anywho so here we go what we're going to do is, I'll kind of do it like this so you guys can all see. I'll take the edge of this, and here's the original. You put a, you'll, I usually bend it like this, kind of get myself a good edge. And when you do this, you put some pressure, so you're not pushing super hard onto it, but you're putting just a little bit of pressure on there, and you start kind of doing a circular clock-like motion. Now, I usually go over most of it, like the armor stuff, one time, kind of get the sheen off, so I kind of see where my playing field is. So now we've got to there, which you can see most of the sheen is gone. It's changed within just that short period of time. Now what you want to do here then is kind of go along where the transition is. So like where it's kind of gets dark to the lighter, we'll kind of rub over that. And this whole time what I'm doing is I'm just rubbing it in kind of circular motions, putting a little, little pressure, letting the steel wool do itself. I mean, do its own thing by itself. So, as you can see, it's already starting to change just that quick. Um, so, I'm going to speed up a little bit here, put a little more pressure, my fingertips. So, that's kind of what it's looking like right now still going and what this is doing is it's actually shaving off the black now I go with a little bit thicker black because it gives you a little more playroom when it comes to you know adjusting your scorching and uh, damage and everything so I'm still going to go in here get a little here on the end and again I can't emphasize enough how important imperfection is perfection when it comes to this stuff so you just kind of keep going like so I usually have headphones on, I'm listening to music, usually chatting with people on the Facebook, you know, um, having myself a good old time, drinking my Diet Coke, you know, uh, chatting on the forums. Notice I don't mention talking to girls anywhere in this. <laughs> so, what now has kind of happened, as you can see, is all of a sudden we have ourselves a very scorched piece of metal right there. That was just from rubbing the steel wool on there. And taking off the black heat. I mean, it's cleaning everything. And, um, you know, if you're all clear coat stuff, be really careful. Some clear coats will react bad and it'll kind of take away that sheen. But yeah, now it looks like a piece of metal. Now, as you can see, the reason why I put those little cuts in there is so you can see that 
by doing that. The black had gotten inside there, so it's the black shows that detail now, kind of like a crack. This is what happens with any sort of cuts, scrapes, gouges. The black stays in there, and when you're rubbing that steel wool over it, it's causing it to come through. Now, the other thing to remember is when you're doing this along these kind of gouges, the friction's cutting down the paint, so it's also going to take off the edges. So whatever color primer you have under there is going to show along the edge of those gouges um, more than likely. So that's why I use brown, because brown is a natural color. It's also a natural color of rust, corrosion, things like that. Um, so it, it, look, it, it looks really good in the end. So once you get to that point, I mean, you can do this with all different things. Now, let me show you a full proc. Now, you've already saw the armor, the chest armor, which is the uh, PVC foam board and everything, kind of how that worked out. Now, what's going to happen here, as my computer gets all fuzzy, is this weathering um, technique can be used on just about anything. Um, I actually use it on, like, the blaster back there and everything. Um, it can also be used on things that are porous or have ridges or whatnot, like this right here. This is the ultimate example of weathering. Lo and behold, my helmet. That's right, this is Kabiri Fox's helmet. Actually, this is General Kabiri Fox. Um, we'll talk about that some other time. But, um, actually, my yellow wire. Needs, there we go. I need to tighten my yellow wire. Can't drop down. So, on my helmet, as you can see right there, uh, up on the blue stripe, that's one of those techniques I was talking about earlier about the kind of gouging, distressing around. So you have the black. Let me put it up close there so you can see. So when you have the paint, it kind of looks like it's been chipped, been scorched, and everything like that. Um, I did the same thing with the stripes there, but that black's a lot more. That's all acrylic paint that's been done down with um, steel wool over there. Um, same with along the edges here. That's all acrylic paint, kind of just rubbed on our, what we call dry brushing, uh, but I did it a little wetter. Now, the rest of this is all done with the spraying method and steel wool. So it gives it that really cool, you know, really, really awesome, sorry if it gets all blurry, metallic look to it. Um, same with like ear caps and everything like that. So in the end, you get a really epically epic of epic proportions. What epic, let's just drink something. Um, kind of texture and again now my helmet was the first of its of the destroyers of all 17 made so it has some imperfections to it and what I actually did is I actually used the imperfections to kind of look more damaged but I'll cover that in another thing so um that kind of concludes the tutorial on how to do Kabiri Fox scorching um if you have any questions or anything like that you can shoot me a PM on Facebook um I believe it's facebook.com slash fox3159, I think. But you can look up Corey Cutlip. That's also me. Um, so that concludes it. Check out my Facebook. Check out Fox Tech Props. Check out Outer Rim Brigade. Check out The Dark Empire. Check out Mandalorian Mercs, 501st Rebel Legion. All those groups are awesome. In 70 Elite, everyone's just a big happy family. So um, just big happy dysfunctional family. <laughs> hey, whose family doesn't have dysfunctionalism in it? Anyways, um, I will be back, and it will probably be fairly shortly with another tutorial of some form and me rambling. So have a great day, evening, night, morning, something. <laughs>